you're doing keto and you're getting fat. What the heck are you doing wrong? Or you're doing keto and maybe you've just reached this plateau and you're like, what the heck? I was losing weight and now I just feel like, if anything, I might even be gaining weight. It's very frustrating and as keto gets more popular, we're seeing it happen more and more. And I've got five very clear scientific reasons as to why this happens. And this has come from me talking to thousands and thousands of people and then doing the research. So I'm gonna break them down for you. So I want you to get your notepad out and make a little check by each one of these that might apply to you. And I'm gonna help you through them. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. With new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I also wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button, but also hit that little bell button. That way you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live. I also want you guys to check out ButcherBox down in the description. So ButcherBox is a source for you to get grass-fed, grass-finished, high-quality meat delivered right to your doorstep, literally for cheaper than it is at the grocery store. So you go online, you order your meat, you order your beef, your chicken, your fish, whatever you want, and they'll deliver it to your doorstep and it's cheaper than what you'd pay at the grocery store. So go ahead and click on the link. I've got special pricing for everyone that watches my videos. Big thank you to ButcherBox for doing that for everybody too. All right, let's go ahead and let's dive into this. Okay, getting right to it, number one is overdoing the fats. Now, before you turn off this video and say, hey, this guy's just gonna be ultra basic, I don't wanna watch this, let me explain that it's more so than just overeating, okay? Sure, overdoing the fats can be basic, right? Fats have a lot of calories. So yes, on a keto diet, you can overeat the fats and you can gain weight. It's pretty easy, okay? But it does go deeper than that. But I wanna get one thing totally straight here. Just because you are on keto doesn't mean that you can eat as much in the way of fats as you want and never gain weight. Calories still matter, they just change a little bit. Okay? But more importantly, what happens when we're in keto is that the fats that turn into ketones can actually signal specific cellular responses. So ketones aren't just energy. They act like drugs within our bodies. Okay? So what will happen is these ketones will bind to fat cells and they will send a signal to the liver that says, hey liver, we've got enough ketones. You don't need to produce any more. So therefore it slows down fat burning. Yeah, too much in the way of ketones will actually slow down fat burning because of this process. It's reducing lipolysis. So what ends up happening is people start chasing the ketones. They want to get their ketones higher. They think they need to eat as much fat as possible because they've been conditioned to believe that more fat equals more fat burning. No, more fat just equals more calories. All you want to do is get your body primed to use fats and then let it run on your stored body fat tissue. That's what we really want. So the first thing you wanna do is reduce those fats a little bit. Don't increase them. I talk to so many people, oh, I guess I just need to up my fats and get more ketones. No, if anything, you probably need to reduce your fats a little bit to reduce your caloric load and let your body actually start burning its stored sources. Okay, number two is crossing the carb barrier while still eating fats. What does that mean? It means you accidentally cross over that carb threshold to the point where you're actually not in ketosis, but you're still eating fats as if you were deep in ketosis. You see, coming out of keto and eating carbs isn't necessarily the end of the world. That's not a bad thing. But eating a bunch of carbs while you're still eating a bunch of fats, that's where the problem is. Now, it can happen easily. If you eat a bunch of almonds, if you eat a bunch of cashews, things like that, yeah, in aggregate, they'll start kicking you out of keto. You gotta be really careful. That's why you should measure there to make sure you're not getting kicked out of keto or at least measure your blood glucose. See, what this does is it puts you into a gray area. Okay, you're not eating enough carbohydrates to really get the benefit of the carbohydrates. You're eating just enough to knock you out of keto. And then you're not in keto, so you're not getting the benefits of keto. You're stuck in this gray area of sludge and nonsense. So not only do you feel like garbage, but it's also gonna halt your fat burning and even contribute to fat storage. Here's what's interesting, and this is very important you hear me out on this part. If you're not in ketosis, okay, I'm gonna say that again. If you are not in ketosis, like you get knocked out, you will store fat significantly easier than you will store carbs as fat. Yeah, 90 to 95% of excess fat gets stored if you're not in ketosis, whereas only 70 to 75% of excess carbs gets stored as fat if you're not in ketosis. So my point is, if and only if you slip out of keto and then you're eating too many in the way of fats, too much fats, 
those are going to get stored super easily. So you have to be careful. You either have your carbs and don't have your fat, or you make sure you're careful and not knock yourself out of keto by eating too much in the way of those just random residual carbs. The number three one is sort of a tag along with number two, but to a little bit more of an extreme. Don't mix fats and carbs in the same sitting, okay? Here's the thing. When you're on a keto diet or a low carb diet, you're insulin sensitive. That means the second that you have a carbohydrate, your body just turns into a sponge and wants to absorb things. Okay, so here's what happens with a lot of people. They'll sit down at the dinner table, they'll go out to dinner. They're like, oh cool, I've only had 20 grams of carbs today. I have a little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna have just like a half a piece of bread. It's not gonna kick me out of keto. Okay, it may not kick you out of keto, but you're having carbs and you're spiking your insulin. And then you're still in keto mindset world, so you're still eating all the butter and all the fats and everything like that but you still had a little bit of carb here. So temporarily in that moment in time, you're kicking yourself out of keto, you're at least spiking your insulin, so you absorb all the fat that you're taking in in a negative way. Your liver is like, I don't need to produce ketones right now, he just gave me glucose, so I have carbs, so any extra fat is just storage, just pile it away for later. We don't want that, okay? Additionally, contrary to popular belief, and I'm gonna get destroyed for saying this because no one ever believes this, but fat, spikes insulin too, okay? So fat spikes insulin through something known as ASP. It's a specific protein, okay? So ASP, acylation stimulating protein, triggers insulin to be spiked in its own way. So you consume fat, it creates this protein, and this protein spikes your insulin. Okay, so when you eat fats and carbs together, you have an insulin spike that's occurring from fat and an insulin spike that's occurring from carbs. So double insulin spike. So double fat storage. We can't have this happening when we're this insulin sensitive. Again, that's the main thing here. Do not ever mix a fat and a carb unless it's just like a random little piece, okay? I mean, I just wanna make sure this is clear. Like almonds, you're gonna be okay. A Little bit of carb there, uh, veggies, things like that. We're talking mainly the higher glycemic carbs. Just avoid that process. Next up, again, kind of compounds again off number two and three. Okay, and this was number four, and that's an improper cheat meal protocol. You have to have your cheat meal protocol lined out ahead of time, okay? Cheat meals are part of life, okay? We're not all machines. Some people might get on their high horse and say, yeah, I never have a cheat meal. I've been keto, I've been strict keto for seven years, whatever. Okay, that's cool, good on you. That's not me, I have cheat meals from time to time. The reality is you gotta get programmed about it. You either have a cheat meal where you stay in ketosis, so you just have a bunch of high fat, tasty ketogenic treats, fat bombs, you name it, just stay in keto, or you go the complete opposite and you only have carbs with no fat. Remember the rule I just talked about, don't combine fats and carbs, okay? So a lot of people will say, I am gonna go have my cheat meal, so I'm gonna go have ice cream and donuts, cake, and all this stuff together. Well, remember, we're insulin sensitive, so we don't want that, okay? You can have a cheat meal and stay in keto, okay? Enjoy those fat cookies, enjoy those high fat brownies that are made with almond flour. Enjoy that stuff, but stay within the ketogenic realm. The other side of things is go high carb, but very low fat. So that would look something like uh, corn tortillas with some grilled chicken, something really lean, right? Okay, so you're like, you can have good tasty things that are high carb, low fat. Sure, it's gonna kick you out of keto, but at least you're not gonna have a bunch of fat gain from it. It's just gonna restore glycogen and you can go back to whatever you need to do. The last thing that I wanna talk about, number five, stop focusing on getting your ketones high. And I know I talked about it a little bit as number one, but more ketones could actually mean less fat burning, okay? Now this one's complex, okay? So hear me out, very, very clear on this. And I promise it's going to change the results that you have with the ketogenic diet, okay? Ketones are the measure of, like when you measure ketones, they're the measurement of how much fat is getting converted into actual ketones for use in the body. So at first glance, it sounds like it's an amazing thing. We want more ketones because it means more fat getting turned into energy. What good is that if it's all fat that you're just eating and it's not fat that you're actually pulling from your body fat, okay? Very important. Here's a simple explanation of how this works. We have hormones in our body. Glucagon is one of them. Glucagon is a hormone that is released when we are not eating. Between meals, during fasting, you name it. And glucagon stops something known as malonyl coenzyme A. Okay, 
when malanol coenzyme A is out of the picture, the liver can turn fat into ketones. So case in point is that the liver can only turn fat into ketones when food is not present. That means protein, that means fats, that means carbs. When food is not present is the only time in which the liver can actually take in fats and turn them into ketones. So, pounding a bunch of fat to get your ketones up is not really doing it. The only time you want your ketones up is when you know you have not been eating. If you're fasting and your ketones go up, well, you know that the ketones that you are creating are from your stored body fat. So it's the only time it really matters. It doesn't instantaneously happen. If you go and you eat some macadamia nuts right now, that's not gonna drive your ketone levels up. Your ketone levels are gonna drive up later on after glucagon goes away and has a chance to metabolize that. So if you focus on ketones, you're gonna drive yourself crazy and you're gonna end up ruining this entire lifestyle for yourself. You need to find what works for you and you need to remember also that once you're in ketosis, your body will start utilizing fats for energy without ever turning them into ketones. Your muscle cells will use straight up fats and not even put them through the ketogenesis process. So it completely ends up throwing a wrench in our entire regulation and measurement of ketones. So don't worry about it. Measure here and there, see where you're at, find your numbers, but that's it. Otherwise, control the fats, control the carbs, control your cheat meals, and enjoy life. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.